Dear friends, first of all, I want to thank everyone who worked for my freedom, who acted and thought about journalists who are in trouble in remote parts of the world, the journalists who are paying the price for telling the truth. I'm still not free, I cannot travel and uh, because of the travel ban I couldn't come and speak to you in person, to meet you in person, but I want to introduce my country from the freedom of media perspective. Enter Azerbaijan, the country that became a prison for independent journalists. In the picture you see my colleagues Shahvela Chobanoglu, he is an award-winning columnist, investigative journalist, and other fe fellow journalists, investigative reporters, Aynur El Güneş, Aytan Farhadova, Izolda Gaeva, Aytaj Ahmedova, Natik Cavatli, and truly yours, myself. These are just few of those who are banned from traveling. I cannot travel because of the conditional conviction I have on me. Others, because law enforcement just say that they might have questions to them. None of us are banned from traveling due to the truly legal reasons. The three ladies you are seeing in picture were inv invited to Bandadel, it's the anti-organized crime unit of the Interior Ministry, for interrogation with just one question. Do you work for Maidan TV? Yeah, that was a question. If the answer would be yes, they would be arrested for illegal entrepreneurship. One of the charges I faced during my arrest. I'm now out of the jail under my conditional freedom conviction for the next five years because of the trumped up charge of tax evasion and illegal entrepreneurship. My sentence clearly says that being engaged in journalism requires special permission. And because I didn't get that permission from foreign ministry to work for Radio Free Europe, I'm sentenced for illegal entrepreneurship. After my arrest, most of the media outlets working from outside the country, working inside the country is almost impossible, they stopped publishing stories with bylines. Best investigative reports were published while I was in jail with anonymous byline of local journalists. Those who do journalism know the feeling. When you risk your life, you do the good story, you report about the big crime, a big corruption fact, and you cannot even sign your story. Don't misunderstand, the law doesn't say that journalism is a crime. Our laws don't say that lack of accred accreditation in the foreign ministry means you cannot work. But when it's applied to critical journalism, it's really difficult to make rule of law act in Azerbaijan. My colleague Seymour Hazi remains in prison with trumped up hooliganism charge. He is arrested because he was a presenter of Azerbaijani Hour, Azerbaijan Saat, a TV show that broke the censorship in the country. Seymour is also a political news editor of Azadlik newspaper. He is sentenced to five years in prison. His colleague, fellow presenter of the same satellite TV program, Natik Adilov, managed to escape from the country but the repression machine of the government targeted Natik's brother. Murad Adilov, his brother, is now listed in the political hostages section of the political prisoners list. He is there together with brothers of Gunel Mavlud, the editor of Maidan TV and relatives of Ganimat Zaidov, the editor-in-chief of Azadlik newspaper, who now runs the Azerbaijani Hour show. Azadlik newspaper is the only opposition outlet and they stopped publishing just days ago after the arrest of their di director Faye Gamirli with trumped up charge of spreading religious propaganda. No, he was not religious. Not practicing any religion, never propagating for one. Now no one can read the same newspaper. Repressive machine managed to stop it. Some of our colleagues were forced to leave the country. The government turned its anger to their relatives. And none of us broke any law.
All of us broke the silent rule of regime, unspoken rule of the regime, the ban to tell the truth. What is that inconvenient truth that the government doesn't like? It's all about corruption. It's all about money. Ilkin Rustamzadeh, the blogger in prison, he is in prison because he organized protests through Facebook against corruption in the army. Jasur Sumerinli, the journalist covering mortality in the army caused by corruption, fled the country fearing arrest. I was arrested because I reported about high-level corruption in Azerbaijan. It's about ministers, the president, their family members, members of the parliament and their family members owning illegally companies in Azerbaijan and abroad and hiding their business interests behind offshore companies. When the world has been shaken by the Panama Papers scandals, I was already in jail for my Panama Papers. In 2011, after the first story re revealing companies of the president's family in, hidden in Panamanian offshore, everyone was waiting retaliation of the government. And it came. Just a few days after the publication of the story, my apartment was bugged. The video camera was placed in my bedroom, living room and bathroom. In March 2012, when I was working on the next story on corruption related to the ruling family, I was blackmailed with the footage taken by hid hidden cameras. Leave aside my problems. Government blocked investigation of the assassination of Elmar Husseinov, the editor of Monitor magazine, and those who killed Rafik Tagi, the critical writer, were not brought to justice. With all these problems, Azerbaijan lacks institutions to support media. Information Ombudsman Institution is inactive. NGOs who worked to support media were closed. Leaders of them were threatened with arrest, left the country. Some of them just were silenced with presidential grants and gifts. Here you see the cartoon drawn by a cartoonist Gunduz Agaev, showing the press council's contribution to media freedom in Azerbaijan. The chairman of the press council, a so-called self-regulation institution, has a seat in parliament and supports the repressions of the government against media. The government does its best to push real journalism beyond the legal area. The radio I've been working for before the arrest and still cooperate with is not able to carry live debate programs because their newsroom and radio studio was sealed all the equipment was seized. Most of the independent journalists work from home. Underground journalism conditions can be compared to conditions in former Soviet Union during the repression times be behind the Iron Curtain. Internet is saving the situation, of course, but it has its own risks. Abdullah Bilov is another imprisoned blogger. He was jailed for creating a Facebook page criticizing psychophants. Police planted drugs in his pocket and jailed him for five and a half years. He is one of those whom the government refused to release despite all the calls from international community because he refused to write a letter of clemency. It's amazing to see that there are still people who are not broken who protests, who continues telling the truth and despite all the oppressive measures. And they need your support. They need institutional support. The world should demand the government of Azerbaijan to allow international and local NGOs in Azerbaijan. They need legal support. The world should convince Azerbaijani government to stop disbarring and arresting lawyers who take political cases who defend journalists. International Broadcasting Union and other regulation agencies, international regulation agencies, should speak up for Azerbaijani journalists to convince Azerbaijani government that national frequencies should not be allocated to just loyals to government. Those criticizing the government should also be allowed to enjoy broadcast opportunities. Journalists here in Azerbaijan more, need more empathy. We rarely hear international community, embassies, speaking up against repressions.
And the government that closes the space for media and critics should pay the price for this. Things that I don't understand is why there is no mechanism in the world that would make it a little bit difficult for the governments to do that to their own citizens. I don't understand why the government of Azerbaijan cannot pay the price for depriving its own uh, citizens from the freedoms. People in the government of Azerbaijan, they enjoy the products of democracy abroad. They travel abroad, they get medical assistance abroad, their children educa are educated abroad, and they deprived the same, uh, their own nation from the products of democracy. The, the country cannot benefit good health care and good education because of corruption, that the corruption system that created by the government. And what I'm saying is the world should demand that those governments who are depriving their own citizens from the products of democracy should be banned from using the products of democracy abroad. Sanction for sanction. That's a key to the solution. The government of Azerbaijan will stop oppressing its own people when it will face the price.